Welcome to this month's masterclass all about seborrheic dermatitis. And this is a question I get a lot and something I see very, very often in my clinic. So seborrheic dermatitis, it is a skin condition that affects the oil rich areas of the body. So mainly the face and also the body, but it can affect the scalp, the chest, um, around the nose, um, around the forehead here, um, this, the nasolabial folds, and it makes the areas red and scaly. Um, the scale is generally a bit yellowy, a bit greasy looking, and it's considered the same condition as cradle cap, which happens in, in infants, um, though cradle cap is managed differently, so don't think it's done the same way. So seborrheic dermatitis is much more common in men than in women. It affects about one to 3% of all adults, and it's more common in people over the age of 50. It's often associated with itchy scalp and dandruff, um, and it's all part of the clinical spectrum of sebderm. So the condition was first connected with Malassezia yeast in 1874 by a man named Louis Charles Malassez, hence the name. And he first suggested a connection between the yeast on the skin and the condition of seborrheic dermatitis. The rash is actually an exaggerated inflammatory response to the presence of yeast on the skin. Now we all have Malassezia yeast on the skin. It's part of our normal skin flora. It feeds the sebum on the skin. Um, but there is a direct causal link based on the distribution of seborrheic dermatitis and sebum rich areas of the skin and the rash. And it often improves with um, anti-yeast or anti-fungal treatments like ketoconazole shampoo in the treatment of dandruff because it's the same pathology. But why or how yeast stimulate or induce this red scaly rash of seborrheic dermatitis, we do not know. Some, also be, some people also call seborrheic dermatitis a form of a psoriasis, they call it SIBO psoriasis, which occurs on the face. Um, that may be true. I mean, psoriasis is a condition um, that gives you like these well-defined red plaques that are scaling on the body. Um, so it, it may be related somehow to seborrheic dermatitis, but we're not sure. Now, the big thing is, of course, how do you treat seborrheic dermatitis? And that's the big thing. Now, the first thing, obviously, is get the diagnosis right. Now, this is one of these um, skin diseases where it's a clinical diagnosis. Like I can have someone walk into the room and I'll know straight away that they're there for sebderm. I've seen some terrible seborrheic dermatitis um, in my practice, in my time. And it tends to happen with these yellowy scales, like I said before, with a red rash here in the eyebrows, along the glabella, along the nose, nasolabial fold, um, and, and it can happen in the hairline as well, in the ears and on the chest. Um, and it's the kind of condition that uh, occurs a lot in men um, and gets a lot worse during times of stress or fatigue. So um, patients will always say, oh yes, it got a lot worse when I was like really stressed at work or very, very tired, or I drank a lot of alcohol and it got a lot of worse as well. Um, they often have a history of acne when they're younger and very oily skin. So um, often you see them have um, large pores, and kind of that hallmarks of oily skin. Now it does happen in women as well, but I see it much more commonly in men. I do think it's partially because men produce more oil um, because they have larger sebaceous glands um, and they have more sebaceous glands in their skin than women generally. So they produce a lot more oil. The one thing that uh, happens a lot is that people start to use topical steroids on this, like hydrocortisone or something stronger, or Dactacort, for example, um, which can dampen down the redness, but it always then comes back again because it's not a great treatment it can often make it a lot worse. So my treatment of choice is actually topical tacrolimus or pimacrolimus, which is a non-steroid anti-inflammatory cream and it really helps to calm down um, the redness and basically makes it disappear overnight. Like it's virtually overnight that it gets better. In really severe seborrheic dermatitis where oily skin is a major problem, low dose oral isotretinoin known as Accutane or Accutane can be very, very helpful as well. Uh, for scalp involvement, the best treatment I found is a compounded shampoo that contains ketoconazole, um, a mild steroid, and salicylic acid. Um, it's this one from that I get from Fusion. Roseway Labs makes this as well, um, and I prescribe this for my patients, and it's really brilliant at getting rid of um, the scaliness, the itchiness, and the redness. Uh, sometimes I also use, use a moderate steroid combined with salicylic acid in, an, in a topical application for the scalp, which also really helps um, get rid of the itchiness. Um, usually after using it a couple days in a row, same with the shampoo, everything gets better and you just need to use it as maintenance. I have separate dermatitis of the scalp as well. I tend to get it in the front of my scalp here, especially when I'm stressed or tired. So if you've ever seen me in clinic and you're like, oh, she has like a rash on her forehead. Um, that's because this is a condition that I have as well. Um, this is actually my shampoo that I use. Um, I actually use it every day when I wash my hair and it really keeps it under control normally, unless I'm really, really stressed out or lots of things are happening. So um, you can always tell how stressed I am by my flaky scalp. 
So, but it's usually literally here. Um, and you, you can literally, you can see it. It's quite obvious. Um, right. So that's seborrheic dermatitis. It is an infinitely treatable skin condition. It's very common, especially in men, especially if you have oilier skin, you don't need to suffer with it. It has a very classical appearance with the redness and the yellow scale, and it can definitely be treated simply and easily as long as the diagnosis is made and it's correct. I hope that was helpful.